right, Jeremy Feldman with the Memphis Astronomical Society. Welcome to another episode of Telescope Tips. Once again, I'm here with Brian Hancock. Good morning again. And we're talking today about some other equipment that you can use, getting back into the theme again of the question that we get a lot about, what type of telescope do I need to get started observing? And really, I tell you, telescopes are nice. We both own a couple of them, but a good set of binoculars, there's no substitute for having a good set of binoculars if you want to get started observing. That's what we're going to talk about today. Brian actually uses binoculars a lot when he's out observing. You can see a, a pair of binoculars that we worked with this morning, got set up, and uh, a nice tripod, and also some other equipment and, and accessories. So Brian, kind of take, tell us, uh, walk, walk us through what you do with binoculars. Sure, when you're sure. Observing. Well, first, uh, let me say, you know, one of the most common questions that we get at observing sessions is uh, what kind of telescope should I get? And uh, usually our response is, why not start off with a binocular? And um, I've actually had really good observing sessions all night just with a binocular. Uh, for example, this is an 8x42 binocular. You can see how small it is. It's uh, very easy to take with you anywhere you go. You can leave it in your car. You can travel with it. As a matter of fact, I spent three nights in 2015 um, under the skies at Death Valley with just this. And I was not bored a single moment. Yeah, dark skies like that, you can see exactly. a lot. Exactly. And uh, that's also one of the problems with a small binocular. Now this, uh, you can see we're in a suburban area. This is gonna be fine for the moon. Uh, you can do a lot of uh, lunar observing with this um, and for some wide open clusters. Um, it's got an exit pupil of about 5.25. So how do you, you know, calculate the exit pupil? Well, it's eight by 42 and you divide 42 by eight, that gives you the exit pupil. And for example, this is a 25 by 100. Divide 100 by 25, that gives you a four millimeter exit pupil. And that tells you how bright it's going to be. Well, a 5.25 exit pupil, so basically a five millimeter exit pupil, it's gonna be kind of bright around a lot of light pollution. So you may not get as much enjoyment from using this in the city or in the suburbs, as you would if you were at a true dark sky site. Uh, that being said, the Andromeda Galaxy is just superb. This is the ideal instrument for that if you're at a dark side. Uh, so um, at Death Valley, of course I saw Andromeda, um, M33, the Triangulum was magnificent. Uh, the Orion Nebula, you, you can see not just the nebula, but the nebulosity surrounding it. So if, if you're traveling, um, this is your best companion. It doesn't take up a lot of space and, um, and you can do astronomy wherever you go. So I highly recommend a small handheld binocular. Yeah, yeah, in fact, if you had one piece of equipment to take with you, assuming you lost everything else, it would be a, set of bino a good set of binoculars. Right. Now, if it was, if, if you were gonna take away all of my goodies and I could only have one thing, that would be what's in Jeremy's hand. This one right here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another handheld binocular, but it has image stabilization technology. So it's um, it's made by Canon, and of course, you uh, as you know, a lot of cameras have image stabilization or IS, and uh, so that you can, if you've got shaky hands like I do from drinking too much coffee, yeah, uh, you can point and shoot, and the image is still stable. Well, this binocular has that. Uh, you can you can look at the moon. It's a 15 by 50. So you have a 15 power, and uh, and usually that would be a little bit difficult to handhold, but uh, you can, um, if, if you go camping, you can uh, get in a chair, observe with that binocular all night, and, um, and you'll be all set. Um, as far as cost goes, um, honestly, they are a little bit more expensive than um, a binocular like this, but if you consider that you're not having to buy a tripod, um, and that you can take it anywhere. Uh, I've seen these on the used market for about $750, and, um, and there's no reason not to buy used. Um, so I've, I've seen them on Astromart and on Cloudy Nights uh, for seven, between $750, uh, $850, uh, sometimes even cheaper. Yep. 
Now, that may sound like, you know, a little bit of money. Right. But the other side of that is, you know, you buy a telescope or even a, a set of binoculars, what ends up happening for a lot of people is it ends up in the closet or the attic and exactly. doesn't get used because it's so cumbersome to get it out and set it up. Right. Whereas with something like this, you're going to use it more frequently. So in terms of return on your investment from the standpoint of frequency of use, a good set of handheld binoculars is likely exactly. to be your best bet. I have logged more hours of, of observing hours with that than I have with anything else. And uh, you really can't underestimate how lazy amateur astronomers are. Uh, so you can spend a lot of money on equipment, on big scopes and on tripods. The problem is at four o'clock in the morning when you want to go out and observe something, all those things are a lot heavier yeah. than, than uh, they would normally be. And if all you have to do is grab that binocular and walk outside, you'll get a lot more observing. Work. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks again, Brian. Another sure. episode of Telescope Tips. Again, we're talking today about really just getting started with your basic handheld binoculars, whether it's the set that uh, Brian just showed you or if you want to spend a little bit more and get a set of, a good set of image stabilizing binoculars, then that's a great piece of equipment to get started right. with. And again, our website is memphisastro.org. The Memphis Astronomical Society meets once a month, first Friday of every month at Christian Brothers University, Assessi Hall, room 155. The meeting starts at 8 o'clock. You can meet myself, Brian, other great amateur astronomers around the community. We also host two dark sky observing sessions, weather pending, every month. So it's a great opportunity for you to come out, look through a good set of binoculars or telescopes, um, a lot of different pieces of equipment that come out, and again, explore the sky and, and learn about the universe. So again, our website is MemphisAstro.org. With Brian Hancock, I'm Jeremy Veldman. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode of Telescope Tips. Clear skies.